what's going on guys welcome back to a brand new vegas 18 tutorial now in this video i'm going to show you guys a really cool effect that you guys can apply if you for example have doesn't have like a certain camera or a certain lens the topic that we're going to go over today is how to create this really really cool depth of field effect now i'm looking in the viewfinder right now if i'm going to go ahead and create this depth of field effect you got to make sure that everything is like masked properly because of course we're going to simulate this effect because like i told you if you use a different camera that doesn't have an option to zoom for example on the physical lens right now this this is the effect that we're recreating today of course as you can see i'm still moving around in the screen and nothing is really like glitchy it's really cool that you can simulate this effect by just using a feature in vegas inside vegas pro instead of using your physical camera to create this effect so if you guys are excited make sure to hit the like button down below subscribe if you're here for the very first time watching and i would say let's go ahead and start creating this cool depth of field effect right after the intro Alright guys, so as you can see right now, we are in Vegas Pro 18. So for this instance, I'm going to use my intro clip because that's the most easy one. What we're going to do first of all is we're going to pick the clip and select it where we want to affect the start. So that's right here. So then what we need to do is we need to right click next to our clip or just on an empty space in our timeline. So then right click and hit insert video track. And then what we need to do is we need to hold left control and drag this video up. So we actually duplicate it or another way you can do it is just right click on it then you want to hit copy and then on the track above it you want to hit paste but then of course the cop also copies the audio so i just prefer to just to hold left control click on only the video and drag hold the control and just drag that up like that we are going to make a mask on the top clip so go to the event pan crop icon right here and then what we need to do is we need to basically add in the defocus effect in vegas pro so we're going to click on the video effects tab right here and then we're going to go to the d or you can just type in and D focus. So right here it is. You want to pick the default and you want to drag that on top of the top track. Okay, we're getting close, but the only thing what we need to do is we need to draw a mask around ourselves first so that only the background is going to be blurry. So what we're going to do is we're going to uncheck the defocus for a second. We're going to go to the pan crop tab right here and then we're going to click on mask at the bottom. We're going to select our anchor creation tool or you want to press D on your keyboard. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make this window a little bit bigger by dragging dragging it like that. So then what we need to do is we need to draw a mask around ourselves. So of course, I want to make sure that I don't draw up myself because then the chair I'm sitting in right now is also going to be blurry and that's not looking realistic. Now, I want to keep in mind, I want to mention that if you're going to move a lot, honestly, you have to do it mask and frame by frame because Vegas Pro doesn't have an option yet. Or you can try to bezier masking, but the only thing is that you only have like squares, a diamond shape, a rectangle, for example, a circle. You don't have like any custom shapes that you can make Vegas track yourself or whatever it is in the screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to click mask and make sure that the check mark is in that box. Then we're going to, of course, make sure that we have our anchor creation tool selected and we're going to start drawing the mask around the chair in this case. But of course, if you're standing in front of the frame, you want to do it around yourself or basically anything that you want to make look like it's sharp and focused. I'm going to go around very quickly just to show you guys. But of course, if you guys want to have the best, most incredible and realistic result, then you have to do this very accurately because the blur is actually going to be visible if you're off wipe masking so now we're going to keep selecting everything that we want to have but of course i also want to have this one a little bit blurred we're going to undo a few masks by pressing ctrl z and then we're going to go to the top right here to the wall then we're going to click right here on the wall drag it all the way to right here and then for example right there so then of course the poster on the wall is also masked so then we're going to go back to my hair so then when you draw the mask you don't want to basically go back Back, for example and go around yourself right here then you're going to cut out for example your mic as well so just go around the frame back to the very beginning right there and connect these two right here so we have a nice mask so now let's go ahead and close this out for a second so now we're going to go to the beginning frame we're going to go back to the event effects and we're going to make sure that we will enable our defocus now as you can see the defocus is inverted meaning that our mask that we just selected is blurred and the background is sharp we want to actually reverse that so we're going to go to the defocus menu so what you need to do then is you want to go to the pan crop tab and right here it says mode and you want to put that to negative so as you can see right now the background is blurry and we are sharp it doesn't really look like realistic and it honestly looks like there's some sort of a stain on my lens so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go to the defocus tab and right here it says radius and you want to bring that down a whole lot 
Now, as you can see, of course, how far you bring it up is depending on the on the blur. I wouldn't crank it up like too high so that it looks unrealistically. So I think this one is actually looking pretty nice. This one too is a little bit of blurry, a little bit of detail. But of course, if you want to have it a little bit more just like that, you can also do that. But keep in mind that, of course, the mask around your head, especially when you're moving, will be more visible if you're going to drag up the radius more. I just want to point that out. So now let's say that we're going to do it like this. We have the orientation. Now we just want to don't want to touch that because let's say if I'm going to move this marker, nothing really happens into my frame. So then the disk curvature is basically not doing anything as well in my case. So I'm just going to leave that right here. The bloom threshold is basically how strong do you want to have the colors in the background. So if I drag this all the way down, then you see a lot of unrealistic things. But if you drag it all the way up, all the colors are actually just gone. And I think, you know, messing with this marker with the bloom threshold works exactly and really, really nice with like these sort of like lights on like a thread that you put around your Christmas tree. These really tiny ones, you can make a really, really nice ball out of them in the background, for example. So if I put this one on 97,000, as you can see, the color starts to be more pure and more like contrasted. So I would like to have it, for example, a little bit like that. And the bloom strength is basically the strength of that color in the background. If I move this marker down, as you can see, it will go away. And then if I bring it all the way up right now, as you can see, it comes back. So you can totally customize how blurry it is. You can put the bloom strength to zero and then crank down the bloom threshold a lot more to have it, for example, more like of a contrasty instead of like, for example, this. So of course, a bloom strength and the bloom threshold and the radius, these three markers, the top one and the two bottom ones are the main ones you always want to adjust until your shot looks great until, until you're happy with it. But now we're going to move on to the thing where you're going to move because of course, this works great for a thumbnail. But if you're going to start moving, if I'm going to go and click on sync cursor at the bottom, this little icon below or masking menu, if I move around, as you can see, the mask is not where it's supposed to be. And if I play it back, as you can see, my ear is just blurred. So how we do that is we, if we're going to move a lot, we're going to literally do this frame by frame. Unfortunately, that is the only reason right now and the only method as well that you can do this accurately without using the Bezier masking, because of course, in Bezier masking, you only can do shapes and triangles and squares. And this is just a really custom one. Now, let's say that we're going to just move up one frame just like that. It doesn't really make that big of a difference because I'm not moving fast. But if I'm going to move up, for example, a couple more frames just like that right now, what you need to do is you can hold control and then double click on it. And then you can literally adjust these keyframes and just make sure that you will mask out only the parts that needs to be blurred. So right now, if I move it a little bit, like right here, a ton of my hair is still off. So that's what you want to do. And that is how you can really, really simply adjust these masks as well here at the top. And just make sure that it's all nice and covering around your hair. That's a really, really important point. And that is basically how you can do it. And now you guys know how to properly do it. So this is how you can make this really, really cool blurry background. But of course, the poster is not blurry right now, because it's of course, way, way closer to the camera than you know, the couch is at the very back. This is a one way how to do it. And of course, I hope like Vegas Pro future versions, they will like include like this sort of, sort of like a masking tool where you can where they can track like this, for example, one object, and then you have to only just mask it once and then just hit, for example, you know, track, and then it will do all the movements. And there's nothing more to it and this is basically how to create this really cool depth of field effect in vegas pro 18. all right guys so that's it for this video now you guys know how to create this really cool depth of field effect in vegas pro 18 without having like a two or three thousand dollar camera with like a five six hundred dollar lens that you actually sometimes need in order to create this effect because of course a lot of videos you guys see with a, like a lot of depth of field where somebody's really sharp in the screen and the background is really blurry of course that's not done in post that's just done right on the spot for recording with an actual lens and a body that is able to do that. So if you guys enjoyed this video and you find this video helpful and you want to use this next time in your videos, make sure to award it with a like down below. Also, let me know down in the comments what you would like to see for future videos. Thanks a lot for the continued support, guys, and I'll see you guys, obviously, in the next one.